Hello and welcome to StarTalk's new video blog series, StarTalk Now. My name is Thomas Sao and I will be your host today. With this new series, we will discuss world language teaching best practices, hot topics in language teaching and learning communities, tips for running a language program and much more. This vlog aims to introduce you to new techniques, new ideas and new resources. Each episode will begin with a conversation, but it will be up to you to keep talking and move the conversation forward in your communities. With us today are three world language experts and StarTalk team leaders who have observed hundreds of classrooms. Please welcome Greta Lungard, Laura Terrell, and Roseanne Zapieri. In this first episode, we will try to answer the question, if you walked into a StarTalk classroom, what would you want to see that makes an effective language learning experience? And for that, I have a couple questions for our guests. Our first question is, what do you look for when you walk into a classroom? Well, I tend to look around the room, um, looking for evidence of student learning by student work products, looking a little bit at how the classroom's arranged um, to see if it's designed to facilitate student-to-student -student interaction. I also kind of look at room arrangement. How are, how are the desks, are they arranged in a way that's conducive for a foreign language classroom, for example, a world language classroom versus uh, a different kind of um, content. So I'm looking at that to see how students can interact with one another. Okay, and, and I'm looking also for evidence that the students have access to what the objective is or the can-do statement is for the lesson and, and even a lesson itinerary so that they know what's going to go on because the lessons are conducted in a language other than English and so they need that guidance in my opinion. Okay. So then once you're in this classroom, what kind of routines do you hope to see to start a lesson? Depending on <clears throat> where they are in their lesson cycle, is this the input phase where mm -hmm. the teacher is providing input or providing access to input? So is she checking then for comprehension as she goes? Or have they already done some input and so now they're in the processing phase? So I, would, I always tend to look for what phase are they in in the lesson cycle? And in my mind, that's input processing and then leading to some kind of productive activity after sufficient amounts of each of those two things. And then how much are the students in the language? How much teacher to student talk is there versus student to student talk? But what does it look like? Um, if you had somebody who was not trained, not part of the StarTalk family, not a language educator, a principal, a parent that walked in the classroom, what would be some of the things that you would expect a parent to see when they walked into a language classroom, a StarTalk classroom? What, what are the kind of things happening that you could see describing it? And just try to describe it without using, you know, big words that, that we like to throw around. The kids might get up. Okay. Yeah. And they might, the teacher might distribute, well, many things, either, mm -hmm. you know, a photo or I've seen teachers get, uh, have masks like on a, on a, on a stick. I don't know how, I don't know how better to describe that, <laughs> but the kids would hold that up. And so then they would, they would circulate around the room and interact with one another, asking and answering or, or describing each other. It's not even asking and answering. Mm -hmm. So they'd have a lot of practice with using either mm -hmm. you know, the previously learned vocabulary and the new vocabulary. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it gets them out of their seats. Mm -hmm. I think we want to see them out of their seats from time to time. We want to see them interacting, as we've said mm -hmm. a couple times, with one another, and also processing language. And so that's sometimes harder to see. <clears throat> so a couple of teachers I worked with before have described it, and they were untrained teachers, that uh, an effective language classroom looks messy yes, and looks does. loud. Would that be a yeah, good description? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've actually had people complain and mm -hmm. say, well, that teacher's classroom is loud. And I said, well, that's a good thing. Because that means they're purposely used... Purposely right. loud. So why, yeah, talk about that. Why is that a good thing that it's because loud? Because that means that students are using the language. And mm -hmm. the only way to gain communicative skill and, and a, a proficiency is to practice and mm -hmm. to use the language. Mm -hmm. and, and they're using the language to say things they want to say. Right which usually generates more interest and excitement, so the voice tone goes up. I think it's so important for this reflective piece, for the kids to hear others share, yep, and do. for them to be able to share, yeah, because the they whole, want to. one of the biggest keys to this is that students feel that they can do this, mm -hmm. that they feel that's the why having them called can-dos is so important, because I've got to feel like this is attainable for me. 
And but so I've got to know that, yeah, I still can do it. So building that can do mindset and so connected with being able to practice Absolutely. and use the language with my peers, not just with my teacher. Well, one lesson that I saw years ago that I thought was was uh, well done is that the teacher was doing was trying to sum up a unit, and that can always be difficult, I think. And the way she approached it was to really give it over to the students, and yet with a lot of guidance. So they started to create together a semantic map of all of the, you know, not only the vocabulary and the grammar, but cultural aspects in the unit. And she started them off, and then they worked in pairs to come up with additional items that they then came and added to this huge class chart. And then by the end, she was able to use that class chart to check their understanding. And it, it was a simple lesson in so many ways, but it had the kids interacting. They were um, bringing back prior learning. Uh, they were using the language as they talked to one another, as they spoke with her. And they, you know, they were reading and writing as well. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was nicely done. I mean, it's maybe not a wow lesson, but I thought it was a very solid lesson. I, I could say that I saw a segment of a lesson the other day. I wasn't in the entire 90 minutes, but um, as the students entered the room, they were given a picture from a French-speaking, in this case, part of the world. And the, the candy that was on the board, I believe, was I can say where I live. This is very early in the year, and what they were basically working on was looking at world maps, finding out where that picture was, but the mm. goal was that they would be able to say, where do you live? I live in, but they would be showing that picture of different places around the French speaking world and pointing to where it was on the world map so that there yes. was like a mini geography yeah, lesson yes. all mm -hmm. associated with a really common question and answer pattern at the beginning of a novice class. Mm -hmm. Well, what I want to thank you guys for coming. Um, what I think I heard, um, Elements of an effective lesson are having clear goals and can-do statements, um, having ways to provide the input, um, having ways to engage students, all designed to some kind of check for learning either in the middle of a lesson or the end of a lesson. Um, and then what all of you guys mentioned was the idea of that it has to be something about that the students want to learn, uh, not just something that the teacher wants them to know. And so I think that's a really good insight for when it comes to what, what, what makes up an effective language learning lesson. So thank you. And thank you for joining us today. If you have any thoughts or feedback, please share them in the comments section. Keep an eye out for our second episode next month. Until then, take care and keep talking.